today we're going to be uh, doing a kind of a long term review of a helmet. Uh, I wanted to do one for ages, I uh, just haven't really made the time to do it, which is, I know, it's my fault, but anyway. Um, so what we're going to be reviewing is my older helmet, which is the MT uh, Thunder 3. It's a pretty good helmet, um, but we'll get to that now in a minute. First and foremost, what I wanted to do is go through uh, the actual cost of the helmet. So at the moment you can buy this version, which is the matte black version, um, for 105 on sportsbikeshop.co.uk. I didn't really check anywhere else, but I know it's pretty damn cheap for what it is. Just from a complete basis, I think it looks good, and that's where I want to start, because I think that's where a lot of people do start with their helmets, is the looks. So this one, you know, you have that more snowmobile-shaped helmet if you want. Um, but it looks really good, I think, front on anyway, and also side profile looks really nice. You also have, um, for, you know, that you built-in sun visor, which I also think, think looks pretty good um, when you're actually using the helmet. And, you know, you get to look a little bit cooler in traffic and whatnot. Other than that, there's not much else to this helmet. I got the matte black one because I just wanted to leave it as is. I added a few stickers over the years. So what do I want to give it for looks? Honestly, I think a solid four out of five uh, looks wise for this helmet, particularly as this is kind of aimed as a, as a budget helmet, you know, for beginners and whatever else. It's, it's by no means something that I would be wearing onto a track if I was going to go, you know, racing at high speed or whatever else. I definitely use my HJC. Uh, also, if you like this review, don't forget to leave a comment at the end and tell me that you liked it. So I'll do one on the HJC as well. That brings us on to the comfort of this helmet. And it is really, really good. So first and foremost, to get the helmet onto your head, it's quite nice. If you have um, foldy down ears like I do, which can catch in some helmets, this one doesn't have that problem. No issues whatsoever. Helmet goes straight onto your head. Pretty damn comfortable on there as well. Um, the padding that comes standard is pretty good. No major issues with it. And it seems to have lasted pretty well uh, to boot. So from a comfort perspective, it is also quite an airy helmet. So if you more ride in winter, um, this helmet won't suit you as much because it is definitely geared more towards um, hotter climates. MTR Spanish um, originally, uh, I think they started in 1963 or so, 1980 then was when they started really kicked off. But they are a Spanish based company, so maybe that's where the hotter climate focus kind of comes from. But for me, you know, comfort wise, ventilation is very good. Um, the actual form fit and finish on your head is very comfortable. Uh, really don't have any complaints, and the micrometric strap makes it very useful as well. Um, definitely easier to do than the double D ring I have on the HJC. So to get into safety on this, it is fully EC and DOT approved, so it's usable in Europe and America. What those numbers mean is essentially nothing. That is the basic, basic standard that you need to achieve in order to be a certified helmet for use on the road legally. What it does have though is a four out of five star SHARP rating. Now SHARP are an independent testing house that test blunt force impacts um, across multiple areas of the helmet. Now, what that means is it just gives you that little bit more comfort in knowing the helmet has actually been tested to a certain degree. Is it massive? Is it is it you know a huge difference? Probably not, but it just gives you that little bit of more comfort. Same as Snell in America. But I do definitely defer to sharp testing when I am buying a helmet. For instance, when I did upgrade uh, from this to my HJC, uh, the first thing I looked at was what helmets were in my price range. I had a five out of five star sharp rating. But from a safety perspective, you can be pretty comfortable with this. It is a full polycarb um, helmet with polystyrene liners. It comes in two shell sizes, which means, you know, that there is definitely more wiggle in there than I would personally like. The more shell sizes you have, the tighter the overall fit is to your head and the smaller the helmet looks in your head. For instance, this is a large um, and the shell size for this goes from large all the way up to triple XL, I think, which means that the most extra foam padding and whatnot is in this shell size for me, which is your 
least ideal situation. For instance, if you had a medium head, you'd be the top end of the other shell size, and honestly, that's probably the safest place to be, I think, or vice versa. I'm not sure, but I think it's that way. The better fitted it is, the safer you are. But from a safety safety perspective, what would I give this? I think I'm just going to uh, defer to Sharp here and say, you know, 8 out of 10 or 4 out of 5. For a starter especially, for 105 euro, you can't really go wrong. It is it is a very good helmet. It has, you know, modern visor. It does take a pin lock insert, which I would advise so much if you ride in any type of bad weather. Because rain uh, is one of the, the downfalls of this. And I'll get to that at the end. Durability wise then, what would I give the helmet? Because I think that's an important one too. For me... Obviously, durability in a crash and whatever is completely different. I don't know. I haven't tested that, nor can I afford to bait my spare helmet down the road just in case I need it. But what I will say is the interior padding uh, didn't hold up so good. I think that would be my biggest con for this helmet is definitely the interior linings um, longevity. It's just not good. Uh, the chin curtain especially just fell apart and that fell apart really quickly like i'm talking a month or two that thing was in tatters it hasn't gotten any way like much worse but it's also just pretty bad standard uh, all the markings on the helmet have lasted perfectly well so obviously the, the exterior finish is fine um all the ratcheting systems they stayed absolutely perfect popping on and off the visor no hassle at all that's my second visor on it because a truck threw up a lot of stones in my face which was really pleasant and also destroyed my visor and left that lovely white mark on the top of the helmet strap the micrometric strap is a1 absolutely no wear and tear there um i've loosened it and tightened it several times as well as other people have tried that helmet out um no issues there that's will probably last forever um but definitely the interior comfort liners um biggest detractor from this but at the same time when you look at it as an on an overall perspective 105 euro it's pretty good the comfort liners definitely still work the helmet's still tight in my head and everything else it's just they feel they feel like they're gritty even after you clean them if that makes sense they're just they're just you know it's not a premium uh, liner finish so that kind of brings us on to who's this for pros and cons as well right so Who's this helmet for? In my opinion, definitely for a beginner rider uh, and or someone who's just looking for a spare helmet uh, for running around into town. That's what I use this helmet for. It's easy to pop on. The micrometric strap makes it lovely. It's comfortable. Um, it just doesn't weather so well. That would be a huge thing. So pros, we'll get to the pros. Or will we do cons first? We'll do cons first. So cons for this helmet, um, definitely the comfort liners. Comfort liners being the biggest detractor and that chin curtain falling apart, it may as well not be there. Other con is, it's also a pro, but it's a con too, is how airy the helmet is. In mildly cold weather, that helmet is pretty chilly. It's, it's not a hot helmet in cold weather. Uh, and if you do close up your vents, it just fogs immediately. It's just something to bear in mind if you're buying in climates that it happens to rain a lot in, such as here. Uh, you can offset that um that particular fogging issue with a pin lock insert but because it doesn't come in the box with the helmet i'm calling it a con you can fix it yourself for i think it's about 25 euro but that does raise the overall cost of the helmet another con i think is how stiff the movement is on the sun visor i usually just push it back up uh with my actual thumb when i'm finished with it i don't use the uh, designed implement to do so because it can be a little bit stiff there's nothing wrong with it uh, it, it hasn't broken it doesn't need oil or anything like that it's just that's how it is it's, it's quite jankety it's quite a solid push but at the same time it stops it bouncing so again is it really a con i don't know it just takes a bit of getting used to how hard you have to hit uh, that but, uh, lever to actually push down the visor so on to pros the cost i think is the biggest pro for me here uh coming in at 105 euro for that model and i think they go down as low as 85 for fancier designs i just liked the matte black color uh option so that's why i went for that but i think they go as low as 85 euro and up uh, as high as 120 odd euro for different designs 
if you include the pin lock insert into my one for instance it's 130 euro altogether which is still for me a cheap helmet because of one of the other pros which is the sharp rating four out of five is pretty damn good and as i think i displayed earlier in the video um you can see that it does score pretty good across the entirety of the helmet it has that one kind of weaker spot but it's still in the top three uh, color ratings from sharp and scoring four or five it puts it into a range of way more expensive helmets there's plenty of other helmets that scored four to five as well and when i did look through them they did fairly similarly across across the board so you can be fairly certain that for the cost that that is a pro that that safety level for that cost is definitely definitely a pro another pro for me is how easy it is to interchange the visor you can pop it out really easily it's it it's a bit fiddly but you definitely get used to it it's no more fiddly than any of the other quick change visor systems that i've tried that are out there so that's a pro again at this cost point the fact that visor works like it does and has so many different levels very very nice and also it's kind of cracked open level is perfect and then oddly enough onto another pro is how well ventilated this helmet is it's a clan and a pro like i said so in hotter weather so for summer for me and stuff that helmet is lovely and breezy it keeps your head nice and cool um, and it doesn't get sweaty on you which is unless you've had a really sweaty head in a helmet before you won't know what i'm talking about but it is such a pleasant experience when you do have a nice cool head so that's it really um i think that kind of weighs it up do i think that's a helmet worth buying absolutely i would quite happily buy another one if for instance i lost my hcc and i lost that one and i only had a limited budget so i couldn't go buy another hjc i'd definitely go for uh, another empty thunder thun, thun, thunder three uh no problem whatsoever they've been around for quite a few years now so if there was any major flaws with them they would have shown up by now and lastly who's it for for me definitely beginner riders or someone just looking for a run around helmet it's not a touring helmet it's not something i'd be doing huge distances on it's not something i'd be doing across multiple weather patterns on it's just not made for that but definitely beginner riders uh short short enough trips absolutely perfect it is comfortable like i said it will hold up bits and pieces will deteriorate on comfort liners but they still remain functional and comfortable which is what they're designed for would i recommend buying the helmet if you have a limited budget and you're looking for a good safe helmet that in my opinion looks really nice um yeah absolutely i recommend buying this helmet so if you've watched thanks for watching if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and whatnot um and do let me know if you if you liked my review of the helmet to leave a comment somewhere in one of the many social medias i use uh, and i'll try to do another one obviously i'm limited to my other helmet and um, so i can do a max one more of these unless someone for some reason starts gifting me helmets which is very unlikely thank you very much for watching until next time adios also i sent out i sent out the uh, the prizes from the giveaway so you should all have them hopefully in a week or two hope you're all having a great new year um this is the second yeah this is this is new year's so i'm really tired as you can imagine first day back to work and all that also i'm thinking about trying to get another bike um possibly a big tory like old man bike like an fjr 1300 or maybe a more tory harley davidson or something so if anyone wants to chat about that hit me up in the comments because i want to talk to someone about it <laughs> anyway i'm really gone now that's that's a long ass outro bye